but we see another here in our pre-83 touring car race sponsored by Shell Oils watch for the man from the back of the grid there Tom Harvey in car number 47 very quick driver we'll have a look at the grid then for this pre-83 touring car race Pole position, we will see number 67, Stephen Primet, alongside number four, Simon Jeffs, in the golf. Second row, 55, David Howard, in the big Jaguar XJ12, alongside 81, Mark Cholerton, survived a spin to come fourth in race one. The third row, Bradley Bosday in his Escort Mark II, alongside Tim Hayes, number 87, in his Alfa Romeo. On the fourth row, Malcolm Best in his Capri, alongside number six, Anton Martin. He's back out with his Escort. Uh, it should be Mark Lucock on row five with his escort alongside Colin Claxton in the Triumph Dolomite. I think they're both there. Uh, row six, it is Tom Harvey in the number 47 escort this time. Jonathan Corker, though, I don't think he's there in the little Datsun 510. He had problems in qualifying. So the cars will be heading round to the grid then where the Orange Army will line them up. It's another 20-minute race. Stephen Primet looking for win number 61 of his career in his Mark 1 Escort. Hadn't had the best of starts to his season in the pre-83 touring cars, but improving here to date. Let's grab my points chart. We can have a look how everybody has uh, done so far this year. Class A is led by David Howard, with 53 points coming into the weekend, ahead of Alan Wayman. Class B led by Malcolm Best, ahead of Stuart Kay. It's Mike Luck who was on top in Class C and overall, but as we said, he's missing this weekend. So a chance for Mark Lucock to take the lead of the Class C points and make a challenge for the overall title. Simon Jeffs third in that category, ahead of Stephen Primitz. Is Mark Lucock out there? Yes, there's the blue escort. So he's back out. So is Colin Claxton after their spin-offs in race one. Anton Martin's there too. Thomas Harvey. No Jonathan Corker, though, the little dance. It's Mike uh, Luck not racing due to illness, we're told, this weekend. So get well soon, Mike, the championship leader. for this 20 minute race then cars up to the grid for the second race of the day for the Shell Oils pre-83 touring cars a few drops of rain in the air once again the grid set by the result of race one Stephen Primet in his Mark 1 Escort on pole position alongside Simon Jeffs in the Mark 1 Golf GCI second row David Howard with the big Jaguar alongside Mark Cholerton in his Escort RS2000. The third row, Bradley Bosday with his Mark II Escort alongside Tim Hayes in the Alfa Romeo. Watch out for Mark Lucock from further back on the grid as well with his Mark I Escort spun out of the lead in race one. Also watch for Tom Harvey from the back in the number 47 Escort as well. We're about to get underway. The red lights go out and off they go. Decent start by the golf. Good start by Mark Cholerton as well, trying to move up around Simon Jeffs. Can he take the lead? from Stephen Primet as they go into Paddock Bend for into a Coppice Corner for the first time. Mark Cholerton up alongside Primet, but it's Primet who's got the lead. David Howard's got the Jaguar up into third. Simon Jeffs down to fourth in the golf. But it's Stephen Primet who has got the lead. Cholerton in second place and already Mark Lucox, very quick escort, has gained a few places. Bradley Bosday has dropped back a little in his Mark II escort. At the back there, Anton Martin with the Mark III escort. Let's see a Mark III out there. Here come the leaders up into Park Corner for the first time. Number 81 of Mark Cholerton with a good start there, the man from Norfolk. David Howard in third position. There's Tim Hayes, the lovely little Alpha Sud Sprint. I believe that's a cam tail, the uh, design of that car. He's got the Capri behind him of Malcolm Best. Into the gooseneck and down towards Mansfield for the first time. Escorts first and second. And look at Mark Lucock. He's already up into fourth. He's going for third up the inside. Terrific first lap by Mark Lucock. He's up to third already. 
straight past David Howard. He's got a, got past Simon Jeffs and everybody else, and he's already going after the two leaders. I reckon he's going to be with with our race leader Stephen Primmett in a few corners time. What a flying start by Mark Lucock. He spun out of the lead in race one and hit the tyres. You can see the damage to the side of his car there. That was coming onto Park Straight. Caught out by uh, damp conditions, but now he's chasing down Mark Cholerton for second. Howard is fourth, Jeff's fifth. Then he got back to Tim Hayes, Alfa Romeo in sixth. Start to uh, settle in then for this 20-minute race. Malcolm Best under fire from Tom Harvey. Watch for him coming through in the Mark 1 Escort. That car in the hands of his father in race one pulled out of the race I believe with a puncture over the line they go Mark Lucock has gained six places on that first lap alone he's ahead of David Howard facing Primet and Chollerton it's escorts one two and three it should be one two and one Mark one Mark two Mark one there goes Lucock David Howard in fourth Simon Jeffs in the golf is fifth David Howard the only class A car for the bigger machines with Alan Wayman having not uh, entered with a Chevy Camaro this weekend. Simon Jeffs in the little golf. Same class as the Escorts, having to give best to Ford's finest here. A lovely Mark 1 Golf GTI in the colours of Akai Hi-Fi. Simon Jeffs used to race in uh, an Alfa Romeo Alfa Sud himself. Here comes Tom Harvey attacking the Capri, going round the outside at Chris Kerr. That's a rare move. He's got the escort through. Could he be escorts one, two, three, and four here if he can get through? Now his work cut out to catch. Look at that from uh, Tom Harvey. He's throwing that car around like a rally car. That's brilliant. Malcolm Jeffs behind him, then Colin Claxton, and then Bradley Bosday, who's dropped back in his escort there. He's sliding all over the place, just ahead of. Uh, Anton Martin's Mark III escort. He's leading, uh, he's third in Class D, I should say. Class D is being led by Tim Hayes and the Alfa Romeo. Malcolm Best, the only Class B car. Over the mountain. Chased by Colin Claxton. And now Tom Harvey is up with Tim Hayes. This is the sixth position. One way to go yet, the fastest lap first time through. No surprise was recorded by Mark Lucock. The 144-196, he's still in third place. Just behind Mark Chollerton. Here comes Tom Harvey. In the Mark 1 Escort chasing down Tim Hayes. Alfa Romeo against Ford. And another Ford, the Capri. Swinging their way through Coppice up towards Charlie's Bend. This is the battle towards the tail end of the field. Still Stephen Primet's leading. We'll see what Mark Lucock in the bright blue escort can do. Can he catch our two leaders? Tom Harvey, very quick racer indeed. Up onto the back of Tim Hayes. This is for sixth position and for the lead of Class D. Because uh, the Harvey escort is a slightly smaller engine one than... Uh, the other Mark 1s, they're two, these Mark 1s fighting at the front are two litre engines. The Harvey Escort only a 1600. And Mark Chollerton has been caught by the number 18 of Mark Lucock. Headlights ablaze. Stephen Primet over the mountain towards Hall Benz. There, Lucock is right with Chollerton for second place. Chollerton has owned this car for many years. Took a break from racing while he built up his... Uh, building business third place is Mark Lukoff he's been racing I think for even longer in this Mark 1 Escort all very experienced racers here and Cholerton's gone wide coming through Barn Corner very easy to slide wide there it is still slightly damp under the trees and Mark Lukoff's going to go through surely into second place they're still side by side you can see the damage on the side of Lukoff's car and he's going to pull ahead I think as they go into Coppice around the outside yes he's got him Mark 1 Escorts 1 and 2 Cholerton down to third place. They're well clear of their opposition now. David Howard seven and a half seconds back in the Jaguar in fourth place. Fifth is uh, Simon Jeffs in the golf. Then Harvey is up to six. He's got ahead of Tim Hayes now. We'll see if Harvey can catch the top five, the uh, Class C runners and Class A jag of David Howard. Malcolm Best is eighth. He's the only Class B car. Then we've got Colin Claxton in the Triumph. There he is, ahead of Bradley Bosday. 
and Anton Martin. This is the battle towards the back for 8th place. Colin Claxton in the Triumph Dolomite Sprint. Dolomite's been in the top in uh, saloon car racing ever since the uh, model was introduced. First ever 16 valve saloon car. First car sold with alloy wheels as standard in the UK as well. Very innovative car, the Dolly. Stephen Primet in the Mark 1 Escorts. Many claim the Mark 1 Escort to be the first star car in uh, international rallying. The Panu Mikola, Roger Clark and so on. Although some would argue that Saabs were famous before then in the hands of Eric Carlson in rallying. Ah, oh, changed for fourth there. The Golf has got ahead. Simon Jeffs has got ahead of uh, the Jaguar of David Howard as Tom Harvey leaps the mountain. In uh, his Escort, he's got ahead of the Alfa Romeo. He's in sixth position. The lead gap is up to uh, just under four seconds. Not virtually identical lap times from the two escorts that time through. Charlton a further 2.3 seconds back in third and the uh, rain beginning to dribble down once again. There's Charlton in third place. Got back slightly now from Mark Lucock. Now can Lucock catch our leader? As I said, they're doing virtually the same lap times at the moment. Here is Mark Lucock, number 18. See that damage from the tyre wall in uh, race one where he spun. He was on to hold off Stephen Primet for the win in race one. He wants to catch him here and try and challenge again. 12 minutes to go. If he does manage to catch and pass him here, it'll put the end to our uh, sequence of double winners today. Chollerton is third. And David Howard's Jaguar down to fifth behind Simon Jeffs, the golf running well. There's Tim Hayes, he's in seventh place and uh, second in Class D now with Tom Harvey having got ahead of him. Premet over the mountain. There's a whole bend. Sliding about there, it's getting damp out there again. Premet very sideways coming out of Hall Bends. That was more like rallycross than circuit racing. He's all over the place. Look at the understeer there through the hairpin as well. There's less and less grip out there. This is going to get interesting just as race one did. As it's, uh, this part of the circuit is more damp than the rest of it, I think, now. Oh, somebody's off. I think that's Tom Harvey at the mountain. Yes, it is. He's spun. I think he's done a Michael Seaborn. He's gone across the grass there. He's going to lose out to Malcolm Best in the Capri. Excuse me, says Malcolm Best. We'll try and uh, see that again in a second. So Tom Harvey, oh he clipped the kerb on the way into the mountain, got sideways, round he went, he did well to keep that off the barriers, kicks up a load of dirt, oh he said it was like rally cross, yeah that was about as dirty as rally cross, that's a, a mixture of tarmac and dirt services, it's been a few, year, few years since they've had rally cross here at Cadwell Park, the Alfa Romeo only just missed him there as well. So Stephen Primet leads as conditions begin to deteriorate yet again as they have in every race today here at Cadwell Park. Can Mark Lucock catch him? The gap was 3.64 seconds last time through. You can see Primet starting to struggle a bit. Down the drop into Mansfield Bend. It's taking it steady. There's still half this race to go. There's 10 minutes to go. As a certain commentator would have said, with half the race gone, there is half the race still to go. We miss you, Murray. Over the mountain goes our leader. Up towards Hall Bends. How sideways is he going to get this time? He's flinging the car around with abandon a lap ago. A bit sideways again. A bit more control that time. Lucock giving chase. We'll see what the gap is this time through. Mark Cholerton wheel spinning his way through there. Can't get the power down out of the hairpin. It's worse here because we're under the trees. I think the track doesn't dry out as quickly from the earlier rain. Over the line goes Primet. His last lap a 154.5. The quickest lap of the race a 144. Shows how much it's deteriorated yet again. David Howard nearly goes straight on at the hairpin. The big jag. More difficult to get it stopped for the hairpin. 
Lead gaps up to five and a half seconds now, so Primitus pulled away by two seconds on that last lap. There's the golf in fourth place, Simon Jeffs. Tom Harvey is down to eighth as a result of that spin at the mountain. Come through Coppice and Charlie's. Primet, meanwhile, is up at the park corner. Does seem to be able to master the wet conditions rather better than the others. Through towards the gooseneck. Very easy to run wide onto the grass here. We saw Derek Pierce in trouble in the Jaguar race earlier on there. There's the golf. Immaculate condition, the car of Simon Jeffs. Had a couple of wins last year at Silverstone with that car. Here's the battle between Bradley Bosday chasing Colin Claxton. This is for eighth place. I think we may have lost Tim Hayes. The Alfa Romeo has dropped down the timing screens. Well, is that a bit of smoke I see from Tom Harvey's car? Or was it... Uh, no, it must be a lock-up there. I thought that was engine smoke. I think it's tyre smoke. Pushing a bit hard to try and recover after that speed. He's got back ahead of Malcolm Best in the Capri. Not sure where the Alfa Romeo has gone. He's dropped back to last place, Tim Hayes. Whether he's just had a spin somewhere or... I don't think he completed the previous laps. That suggests we've lost him somewhere. Maybe he's pulled into the paddock, I'm not sure. Seven minutes, ten seconds to go as Stephen Primet crosses the line. Last lap of 1.59, so the conditions deteriorating further out there. Lukok has, in fact, closed in a bit. The gap is now 4.6 seconds. He took about a second out of uh, Primet on that last lap. Cholerton's still third. He's further back, nearly ten seconds back in third place. Simon Jeffs in fourth, and is he slowing up there, the uh, golf? Yes, I think he is. Yep, the golf's in trouble. Oh, Simon Jeffs pulling over. Through the fourth goes David Howard. Simon Jeffs out of the race. Some sort of a problem there with the golf. We've got notification of a 10-second penalty being given to uh, number 47, Thomas Harvey. Ah, it's on the timing screen. Time penalty number 47, 10 seconds, practice starts. You're not allowed to make practice starts on your way to the grid. Thomas Harvey guilty of that, so he's going to get a penalty. There's Simon Jeffs. He's out of the race. Yellow flag's out on the start-finish race. He's pulled up just near the uh, pit main exit there. So that's put this man up into fourth place, David Howard. It'll be Malcolm Best in the Capri up into fifth. And, Bob, and Colin Claxton in the uh, Triumph... Dolomite into six. The Stephen Primet continues to lead. We gapsed over four and a half seconds. We've lost Tim Hayes. He is out of the race. I would imagine he's pulled into the paddock in the Alfa Romeo. I can't see him out there on circuit anywhere. There is uh, Thomas Harvey. He's ahead of Malcolm Best on the track. He's sideways there into Chris Kerr. Look at that. Throwing the escort around. But he will get a 10-second penalty, so he's going to drop behind these three cars you can see behind him on the track because of making a practice start. Cholerton continues to push on. The lead gap is now 5.3 seconds. No overtaking down the straight because the yellow flag is out for Simon Jeff's car. There is the lead gap visually between Primet and Lukok in this Shell Oils pre-83 touring car race, there you can see it, Lukok in second, great run through from the back of the grid after spinning off into the tyre wall in race one, straighten the car out again, I don't think he's going to catch Stephen Primitt, I think we are going to see another double winner, if Andy Wilson wins the last race for Classic Thunder, there will be double winners all the way, the only class in which we haven't had a double winner is the pre-03 touring cars. That wasn't an overall win, but Ross Craig won the second pre-03 race because Gary Preville was unable to start. Here's the battle between Thomas Harvey and uh, Malcolm Best. This is for fifth place now. But it'll be uh, academic because uh, Best will get fifth if they stay like this because Harvey's got that penalty to be added on. It is appearing 
on the timing screen with the penalty added. Thomas Harvey is showing in eighth place. You can see there he shows behind Best, Claxton and Bosley. There goes Stephen Primet over the mountain. Bradley Bosday chasing the triumph for Colin Claxton. The leader again sliding his way through Paul Benz. Very easy to do that in the dry, never mind in the wet, a very tricky section of circuit. Mark Lukock in second place. See what the gap is this time. It was 5.3 seconds. With three minutes of the race to go. Two more laps out of this, I think. Over the line goes our race leader, Stephen Primet. The gap is now 7.7 .7 seconds. So Primet has got this race in the bag. There's Anton Martin. We've hardly seen him. Next banger racer. He's got a few different uh, old school Fords he's raced, a couple of Escorts and a Fiesta. He's in ninth place. Simon Jeffs, of course, out of the race now, so Martin at the back of the field. Spun into the tyre wall at Barn Corner, or rather went off avoiding a spinning car, Colin Claxton in race one. See how the conditions have worsened out there. The wipers going on that lovely Mark III Escort. There's the battle between Bosday and uh, Colin Claxton. But the escort has got ahead there into sixth place. Anton Martin up over the mountain. Racing here in a Mark IV escort yesterday. Stephen Primet heading for victory. We'll have one more lap to go. There's David Howard. I don't think he's going to catch um, Mark Chollerton. They're separated by about 20 seconds. So he won't get. Uh, a podium overall. We'll win Class A though, the only Class A entry in the Leyland livery Jaguar. Here comes Stephen Primmett round to start his final lap. Slides out of the hairpin, Mark Lukock in second. Over the line comes Stephen Primet heading for win number 61 in his career. Just over a minute left as he takes the one lap to go board. The gap was 7.7 .7 seconds. Let's see what it is this time through. Has he pulled away any further? Yes, 10.4 seconds this time through. So he's lapping about three seconds a lap quicker than Mark Lukock. Shame it rained for Lukock because in the dry at the start of the race, he was cutting through the field. Got up into second place. Primet was too strong for him as we've seen so often before, after a slightly, by his standards, lacklustre start to his season, Stephen Primet. He's back on top once again. Could he mount a challenge for the pre-83 touring car title, sponsored by Shell Oils? With how slippery the track's got, it must be like driving on Shell Oil at the moment. We have to lap Anton Martin here, in ninth place. Down into the Gooseneck and then Mansfield. Needs to take it easy over the final half a lap here, Stephen Primitz. Up towards the mountain for the last time. Up and over the top. Then the swing through the three hall bends, onto the brakes for the hairpin, then the short straight into Barn Corner. And then he will see the chequered flag ahead of him. Clock has counted down to zero. And here comes the man from Bedfordshire. Finally took his first win of the season earlier on and enjoyed it so much he's going to make it two out of two. Here he comes through Barn Corner for the final time going to be two out of two win number 61 of his career for Stephen Primet he takes the win well clear of Mark Lukock in second place here comes the blue Mark 1 escort great run through from the back after he retired from race one
Mark Lucock comes through for second. 12.9 seconds down on our race winner. It should be Mark Cholerton coming through for third place in his Mark II Escort RS2000. Here comes the man from Norfolk. Fourth in race one. One better in race two with third. David Howard, the big Jaguar, will come in to win Class A. The Premier winner of Class C as well as the overall victory. David Howard, the man from Newbury in Berkshire. And his faithful Jaguar XJ12. Round the final corner down towards the chequered flag. He takes fourth and wins Class A. It's going to be Malcolm Best in fifth position with the Capri. Next over the line is going to be Thomas Harvey, but he's got that 10-second penalty to be added on, so we'll wait to see where he finishes. He crosses the line in fifth place. And I think he will... Yes, Malcolm Best has, has uh, dropped back. Tom Harvey's got away from him. He's in the clutches of Bradley Bosday, so Best losing time there towards the end. And I think Tom Harvey has done enough to be three to 10 seconds clear of him. Yes, he has, so Tom Harvey will be fifth, even with corrected time. Malcolm Best... In sixth, he wins Class B. Harvey wins Class D. Bradley Bosday, seventh. Colin Claxton's triumph. Dropping back into eighth place towards the end. And the final finisher will be Anton Martin. Nearly a full lap behind our race winner. Wasn't quite lap there. Anton Martin takes ninth place. Just coming through the final corners now. We lost Simon Jeffs. He pulled off on the pit straight a few laps from home and we lost Tim Hayes early on as well I think he must have retired into the paddock they're all in now so we'll confirm the provisional results in a second Stephen Primet the winner by nearly 13 seconds ahead of Mark Lucock with Mark Chollerton completing an all escort podium David Howard the winner of Class A in fourth in the Jag Fifth overall for Thomas Harvey. Despite that 10-second penalty, he takes fifth and wins Class D. Malcolm Best in sixth in his Capri. He wins Class B. Then Bradley Bosday, Colin Claxton and Anton Martin, the only other finishers. Simon Jeffs and Tim Hayes were retirements. Head down to Park Ferme shortly then. One race still to go. This is the classic Thunder Saloons and the Blue Oval Saloon Series, sponsored by Edmondson Electrical and Burton Power. They're coming up shortly. OK, we can now head down into uh, Park Ferme, where our race interviewer, Steve Jameson, will be talking to race winner Stephen Primitt. Yeah, thank you very much, Dave. Welcome down to Park Ferme for the penultimate time uh, this afternoon with our overall race winner. Steve, just chatting before we came live there, you've won that by quite a distance, made it look very comfortable at least, but you're telling me it wasn't quite like that. Oh, no, well, just... I mean, we had a bit of heat in the tyres, luckily, and then it started drizzling. I thought, it's OK, it's OK, there's still grip, and then it, and then it, the grip just went, boom, went, and I had a massive moment through the trees, and I thought, all right, back it off a bit, mate, it's wet. <laughs> but when you're sort of tiptoeing, you think the guys are just going to catch you straight away, and obviously they're tiptoeing as well, but, oh, scary. Well, it just goes to show, doesn't it, even in a position of comfort, you're never really comfortable in, on this track, are you? No, and you're so close to going off. Yeah, you've got big moments everywhere. So, oh, another, oh, I'm on the grass. No, I'm not. OK, I've got it. You know, you're thinking, oh, any minute now, I'm, I'm backwards, you know. So, yeah, oh, very happy to make it. <laughs> I bet you are. Look, we talked a little bit earlier. You were so pleased to get race win number 60. Like London buses, eh? <laughs> Hello, doubled up at Cadwell. I'm not walking your heart in life. Well, you can't get many better Mondays than that, Steve. Congratulations on a big win for you. Thank you, mate. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, waiting for our final race of the day then. We'll give you the grid shortly. Hopefully we'll see the couple of cars that didn't finish in um, race one make it out for the Burton Power Blue Oval Saloon Series and also the Edmondson Electrical Thunder Saloons. Great win first time out for Andy Wilson in the big Holden Monaro. Eased off towards the end as the track got damp and uh, Jason West is closing it down. We can now head back to uh, Park Fermate where Steve Jameson has some more interviews for us. Welcome back to Dad's Park Fermate. Mark Lucock, better race two for you than race one, needless to say, but it was a fantastic race two. Starting from way back in the grid, he made up so many places so quickly. Red mist or calculated well? Uh, on the whole, it was calculated. I wasn't quite sure how the car was going to handle, to be honest with you, because we just pulled it all out from race one. Anyway, mechanically, it was all right. So, And, uh, yeah, I got a good start, and obviously I followed the Capri through some of them, and... I think they put me out about fourth out of the first or second corner, so that, that sort of helped. It certainly yeah. did. You were flying through the field at one point. Yeah. Cruel irony of the sun to come out now, though, right? After <laughs> your race is finished, right? Yeah, well, I mean, I was just trying to get some points, to be honest with you, after the first race. And, uh, you know, claw back as many as I could. And then, obviously, I got Mark Colleton eventually. And then I saw the golf pull over because I would get a mechanical problem. And then I thought, right, OK, I can't catch Steve because it's wet. I'm going to just settle for second, so that's what I did in the end. Yeah, not yeah. a bad day's work, hey. Yeah. Race one obviously wasn't what you were after, but I suppose you no, are in no, the... I enjoyed race one. I just, <laughs> to be frank, the car was going well, I was going well. I just made a mistake and paid for it, you know, ultimately. Was that conditions in the end? Because I know you guys haven't had it easy with the drizzle that's been timed today no, at Cadwell. I literally just got a back wheel on the grass and just couldn't hold it. So, uh, but, you know, I was pushing pretty hard at that point. <laughs> that's what it's all about here <laughs> yeah. at Cadwell, isn't it? Yeah, so not a bad bank holiday then, all told. Yeah, all told. We've come at OK. Okay, car's still going, I'm alright, you know, so all to fight for. We've got Snetters in the Mallory now, haven't we? So that's it. Yeah, can't wait, we'll see you there. Alright, cheers, thank you. Cheers for your time, Mark, thanks. Good to hear from uh, Mark Lucock there as we build up to our final race of the day. Thanks a lot to you all for watching, commenting, enjoying the action. Thanks to all our volunteer marshals, as always, as well. And all the other officials here at Cadwell Park couldn't go racing without them. I think we can now head back down to uh, Park Fermi. I think Steve Jameson has got one more interview. We uh, enjoyed hearing from him earlier, so we're going to talk to David Howard with his Jaguar. Back down in Park Fermi. Dave, you class win again, two from two in that sense. You had some... An interesting experience in race one. Was race two any different for you in a way? Uh, it was a lot better to start off with, wasn't it? Um, yeah, it was, go it was going well. Um, Mark was on a charge, Mark Lucott, um, and then the rain came. Uh, I worked out my gear selection a bit better, and then the rain came, and really she doesn't want to go around corners in the wet. She's not good at that. Uh, so that any ambitions of getting on the podium sort of... You know, I wasn't going to win it, but I could, maybe I could have got on the podium. But uh, there you go. It's next to next, and it might be dry. There you go. Let's hope so. I just said to Mark Luke, I actually, a bit of a cruel irony, the sun coming out now, just so you guys have pulled up into yeah, Park Fur, mate. Yeah, it is, it is, it is, isn't it? Um, well, not so bad for the, them, to be honest, the, the rain, because they're more agile cars, as I said. Mine. I've got a lot more power, but you can't use it. You know, so there, there it is. Snetterton, in theory, should be much more your track in a yeah. Jag, right? Well, it will be. There's the 300 circuit. Um, so there's the inner, 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 inner part, um, which is favours the smaller cars, the more agile cars. But there's two long straights to make up for all those... Um, misdemeanors whatever not not driving fast enough maybe i don't know but yeah there's this, there's a very long in fact the long straight out of what used to be called russell i can't remember the name now but it's actually uphill as well so it does suit my car that to get away from people and let's see if i can do it well that sounds like a plan we will see you there right, thank you very much thank you everyone Cheers. thank you very much thank for that. You.